to the flag. Representative Abney. Dear Lord, 38 years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King was struck down in the prime of his life. But even his death could not silence or stop his message. His sacrifice sparked a rising tide of freedom, not only in America, but around the world. Let us pause to remember that his often quoted free at last, free at last, was addressed not just for black Americans, but for people of all faiths, colors, and persuasions. He recognized that America needed liberation from all our past prejudice customs and prejudices, that until we liberate ourselves from them, we will not truly be free as a nation. Help us strive every day to continue to reach for that dream that we have for all Americans. Amen. Amen. I pray to the Representative Williams, Representative. 
Representative Chris Matula, Representative Marcel, Representative O'Brien, and Representative Phillips, as well as Representative Abney. Representative Lancey, I assume you're not on this bill with, with your light. There are no lights, clerk. I'll lock the machine. All in favor, please vote green. Those opposed, red. machine. 61 in favor, zero opposed, the act prevails. Next item, clerk. Item number two, number 7243. Chairman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This bill comes to us from Leader Newberry. It's an act to vacate the forfeiture and revocation of the Charter of the Executives Association of Rhode Island, Incorporate and move passage. Chairman Kennedy moves passage. That is seconded by Representative Casey, Representative Phillips, Representative Tansy, Representative Abney, Representative Morin. There are no lights, clerk. Unlock the machine. All in favor, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Has every representative in their seat voted? Clerk, lock the machine. 63 in favor, zero opposed. The act prevails. Leader D. Simone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move the consent calendar, please. Leader De Simone moves the consent calendar. That is seconded by the Deputy Minority Leader. There are no lights. Clerk, unlock the machine. All in favor of the items on the consent calendar, please vote green. Those opposed, red. And that was Deputy Minority Leader Doreen Cust for the second. Clerk, lock the machine. 57 in favor, 4 opposed. All of the items contained on the consent calendar prevail. I believe that concludes all calendars. Announcements and introductions. Representative Jacquard. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd uh, like to introduce some special guests that we have here today. But first, if I may, uh, state a little bit about what, the background of what brings them here today. Please. Beginning in 2011, Lieutenant Michael Pizzurro from the Cranston Police Department had noticed an increase in breaking and entering crimes in the city of Cranston. He initiated a series of steps to specifically target an investigation into these crimes, which included coordinating his efforts with additional agencies and offices from other jurisdictions. His efforts led to the creation of a task force of detectives and officers from the uh, Cranston Police Department's Warwick, East Greenwich, Citroen Police Department, and the Department of Corrections. Their efforts included surveillance, police work, and the members of the task force were able to apprehend and incarcerate a similar felon who I'm told was responsible for as many as 50 housebreaks in these areas. And uh, due to their efforts, he was apprehended and incarcerated once again. Mr. Speaker, it's my pleasure to introduce the members of the task force to everyone here. And there are several uh, members of the command staffs of each of these departments here with them in their order as well. And uh, I'd like to take a moment to introduce everyone. Uh, and if we could just hold our applause and maybe we can um, give them a round of applause at the end. Uh, from, the, from the Cranston Police Department, we have Lieutenant Michael Bizzuno. Would you mind standing on what your you name is called? Lieutenant Bizzuno was joined by Detective Eric Bacari and uh, Detective Jamie Cahill uh, on the uh, task force. Detective Cahill is on an assignment today and he's not able to be in attendance. From the uh, Cranston Police Department command staff, we have Colonel Michael Winquist, Major Todd Padalano, Major Robert Quirk, and Captain Vincent McAteer. 
from the Warwick Police Department, uh, the members of the task force were Detective Sean Turcott, Detective Thomas DiGregorio, who was unable to be here as well, Detective Timothy Grant, and uh, visiting from uh, the War Command Staff Major Robert Nelson. From the East Greenwich Police Department, members of the, of the task force were Detective Sergeant John Churnside, Sergeant Glenn Torelli, Detective David Black, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Jeremy Figu, and uh, from the East Greenwich Command Staff, I'm not sure if he was able to make it, Captain Stanley Sorella. From the Situate Police Department, we have Sergeant Donald Delary, Jr. Uh, his wife, Karen Delary, is in the, uh, the balcony also. And uh, Chief David Randall is here as well from the uh, Situate Police Department. And from the Department of Corrections, a member of the, the member of the uh, task force was Special Investigator Nuno Figueredo. And with him from the Department of Corrections is Detec uh, Director Ashabel T. Wall, Assistant Director Jim Whedon, Whedon uh, Inspector Robert Brown, Chief Linda Wall, and Chief Inspector Robert Catlow, I don't believe he was able to be here as well. He's on assignment as well. I'd ask everyone to stand and give these officers a round of applause for their terrific work. Mr. Speaker, I have a re House resolution for immediate consideration, which I'd ask to be brought up and uh, read, read, if you would, please. And uh, if it would also remain on the desk for additional signatures after that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Send it up, Representative. Thank you. Any, um, while we're on this resolution, any of the lights for this issue? If you're not on this issue, please shut your light off till, till we get off this so I know who's on it. Deputy Speaker Lima. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the House. I want to congratulate also the whole task force, but I especially want to point out the police officers from our town of Cranston for the great job that they do. They're very neighborhood friendly, and yet they're a very aggressive force. And I want to thank you, Colonel Rehnquist and um, Todd Patalano, for the problems we had in Cranston, for bringing integrity and professionalism back to the city of Cranston. N that never should have happened to you, Todd Patalano. It should never happen to a police officer. And I am so happy that you are back and Cranston is finally straightened out. Thank you so much for all your work. If I may take the liberty, um, my heartfelt thank you to all of you. One way or another, you make our, our community safer. I, I'm going to speak uh, to all of you, but particularly my Cranston friends. Uh, Cranston's always had a great police department, and I like when you guys are around. You, you, we feel safe because of the work you do, and everybody in our community knows that and recognizes that. So thank you. It's uh, Wonderful to see you all here, and everybody, all of you in every community do a great job, and thank you for putting the task force together. I want to recognize Jim Rossi, who's up in the uh, balcony. Uh, he helped organize this with my office. He's a, uh, a resident, a friend, and a resident of the Dean Estates neighborhood, and he was concerned with the safety of the community, and he collaborated with the police, and uh, ultimately a lot of good work was done, and our community was protected. So, once again, thank you each and every day. Colonel Winquist. thank you for your great leadership of the Cranston Police Department. You've made a real difference there, and um, I know the men, I, I've heard it, the men respect you and uh, appreciate good leadership. So, thank you, and thank each and every one of you the, the, for the role 
that you play in protecting the residents of the city of Cranston, and not only protecting us, but making us feel protected so that we can go on our, uh, with our daily lives. And that that's, it's, extends to the rest of you also for protecting your respective communities. You, you men are heroes, and I've always said from this rostrum, the policies that we consider and enact in this office will consider what you do for us in our communities and keeping us safe. So thank you very much. And if I can give a little shout out, I have to for District 16, Detective Eric Bakari lives in my neighborhood. So thank you for being right next door if we need to call upon you. And uh, Bobby Brown, who's in the gallery, Thank you for all you do for our community, Bobby. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you with us today. Thank you. <laughs> Representative Marcello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I, too, would like to join you in uh, welcoming these police officers, particularly my two constituents, uh, Major Petalano and uh, Don Delaire and Captain uh, uh, Randall, David Randall from the Citroën Police Department. Um, this is what police work is when they can, can, uh, can coordinate across uh, district and town lines. And there was a rash of burglaries in the uh, Western Cranston area that actually spilled over to Citroën, which you and I have the pleasure of both representing that uh, area of Cranston and, um, of course, m me representing Citroën. Um, I want to thank you for all your hard work and your dedication, and I wish you well and, and be safe out there. And I appreciate your help. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. And um, if, if I may echo Deputy Speaker Lima's comments, Major Padalano, my, uh, my liaison to the uh, Little League World Series, and, and just a great member of the community in addition to uh, a great police officer. It's, it's wonderful to see you in uniform, and thank you, know, thank you for what you do for us. But I certainly feel better with having you in uniform, so thank you very much for what you do for our community. Representative McLaughlin. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, I too would like to recognize uh, Proceed. A, a detective from uh, the ACI, Nulo Figueroa. He, he, uh, he's my constituent, and I just want to thank him for the job that he does, okay, on behalf of the House. Representative Jacquard moves House Resolution honoring and commending the initiative and actions of the multi-jurisdictional task force that apprehended and charged numerous individuals with robbery and breaking and entering. That is seconded by myself, Lita De Simone, Representative Costa, Chairman McNamara, Representative Marcello, and the entire House of Representatives. All in favor, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Clerk, please read and leave on the desk for signatures. House Resolution honoring and commending the initiative and the actions of the multi-jurisdictional task force that apprehended and charged numerous individuals with robbery and breaking and entering. Whereas citizens of our state rely on local police department personnel to provide protection and security for their lives and their homes at all times of the day and night, each and every day of the year. Oftentimes these efforts go unnoticed. And whereas recently a multi-jurisdictional task force that included officers from four cities and towns, as well as the Department of Corrections, combined their insight, talents, and manpower to apprehend and charge numerous individuals with breaking and entering. And whereas Lieutenant Michael Bazzullo played a key role in establishing the task force. In 2011, he noted an increase in breaking and entering crimes in the city of Cranston. He then initiated a series of steps to specifically target an investigation into these crimes, which included coordinating his efforts with additional agencies and officers from other jurisdictions. And whereas, through their investigations and diligence, the resultant task force, which consisted of Cranston Police Office, Lieutenant Michael Pizzullo, Detective Eric Bakari, Detective Jamie Cahill, Warwick Police Officers, Director, Detective Sean Turcott, Detective Thomas DiGregorio, Detective Timothy Grant, East Greenwich Police Officers, Detective Sergeant John Chernside, recently retired, Sergeant Glenn Torelli, 
Detective Dave Black, Situate Police Officer Sergeant David Dallaire, Jr., and the Department of Corrections Police Officer Special Investigator Nuno Figueredo was successful in recovering thousands of dollars in cash, stolen jewelry, and electronics. And whereas, in addition, surveillance and strong police work by the members of the task force led to the apprehension and incarceration of a serial felon who had once again begun to pursue his nefarious breaking and entering activities. Due to their efforts, he was subsequently apprehended and once again incarcerated. Now, therefore, be it resolved, this House of Representatives of the State of Rhode Island and Providence Plantations hereby extends heartfelt gratitude and praise to members of the multi-jurisdictional task force for a job well done. We furthermore applaud their hard work and dedication for ridding our communities of these scurrilous and dangerous individuals. And be it further resolved, the Secretary of State being hereby is authorized and directed to transmit duly certified copies of this resolution to Cranston Police Officers Lieutenant Michael Pizzullo, Detective Eric Bakari, Detective Jamie Hill, Warwick Police Officers, Director, Detective Sean Turcott, Detective Thomas DiGregorio, Detective Timothy Grant, East Greenwich Police Officers, Detective Sergeant John Chernside, Sergeant Glenn Torelli, Detective Dave Black, Situate Police Officer Sergeant Donald Dallaire, Jr., and Department of Corrections Police Officer Special Investigator Nuno Figueredo. Thank you, Clerk. If that may be left on the desk for signatures. Chairman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. An announcement that the House Committee on Corporations will be meeting at the rise in room 203. Representative Norton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On behalf of the entire Warwick delegation, we want to extend our gratitude and appreciation to the detectives that joined this collaboration and effectively returned stolen goods and helped make our community safe again. Thank you so very much. Chairwoman Serpa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. An announcement, please. Proceed. I hope that, that my colleagues will join me in wishing Representative Deb Falella well. She had some surgery last week. She will be home recuperating. I believe she's home from the hospital now. I hope she's watching, and if so, get well, Debbie. Thank you. Representative Falella, get well. Uh, best wishes are with you. And I want everyone to know that Rep Representative Falella has indicated while she's home recovering that she is uh, available to do whatever work we need her to be done and that uh, we're actually sending her things to work on. So thank you for your commitment to your community, Representative Falella. Get well fast. Representative Corvesi. Um. Announcement, Mr. Speaker. Proceed. I would just like to take this opportunity, which I very rarely do, uh, to wish my mother a happy birthday. And um, I know she's watching. Uh, so, Ma, let me just say this. Uh, anything good that I am, I owe you and your mother. And anything bad that I am, I take personal responsibility for. Mrs. Corvesi, happy birthday. You have a wonderful son, but I got to ask you, Doc, how much good and how much bad is there? <laughs> all good, all good. Happy birthday, Mrs. Corvesi. You have a wonderful son. Representative Lancia. Speaker, I have a House resolution for immediate consideration with the approval of the Majority Leader and the Deputy Minority Leader uh, declaring 2016 Year of the Veteran. Send it up, please. It does not need to be read. I also have uh, just a small a couple of comments I'd like to make in, in relationship to this, too. Send it up and proceed. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker, while you were hosting your event today, we had a small event uh, in the rotunda uh, honoring our veterans and, and talking about some initiatives for veterans uh, this upcoming session. And uh, on behalf of the veterans, uh, you know, we, uh, last spring, I actually uh, had the opportunity to say a few prayers for the beginning of Navy Week, and at the end of that, I came in the house in my whites, and I presented you with a ball cap, and I commented how you were like a captain of a ship, and how, uh, you know, Captain, your office was kind of like the captain's cabin. On behalf of myself and the veterans, and for the event we had today, I have a small gift for you I'd like to give you today in reference to that as well. So, might need a little help here from Representative Felipe. Representative, would you pick that up for me, please? <clears throat> 
Any captain, any good captain, needs a captain's box. A captain's box is what a captain puts his letters from home, any specialized gifts he gets from ship's captains or other officials. Yours, if we open it up, um, it has something you're going to need for your captain's cabin, which is a Can I accept? plaque that says captain. That's going to be needed on your door on the third floor now. And also, any good respecting person. You talked, uh, when I first met you, and you talked initially about when you went into a bar, you went into a bar in Texas, one thing would happen, you went into a bar in Rhode Island, nothing would happen. Well, from now on, when you go into a bar, you're going to have to carry this challenge coin. It's a Navy challenge coin, and the words on it are honor, courage, and commitment, because as a ship's captain, that's what you exemplify. So I wanted to give you that the plaque, as well as the captain's box. And thank you for all you do for veterans. And on behalf of all veterans, I want to say thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Representative. Th thank you, Representative. That is far too kind. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Um, we will determine if I am eligible to accept that, however. I, I don't know if that exceeds the gift limit. So if I can accept it, I'll be happy to. If I can't, we'll donate it to somebody. Or someone will donate it to somebody. But thank you very much to all the veterans. That's uh, extraordinarily nice of you. Thank you. Representative Lancia moves House Resolution proclaiming 2016 to be the year of the veteran in the state of Rhode Island. That is seconded by Representative Norton, Chairman Azanaro, Representative Costa, Representative Riley, Representative Felipe, Representative Handy, Representative Fogarty, Representative McCannon, Representative Agello, and the entire House of Representatives. All in favor, aye. All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The resolution prevails. Does not have to be read. Representative Nunes. Thank you, Speaker. Can I be recording the affirmative on items 1, 2, and the consent calendar, please? You may so ordered. Thank you. Representative Tabone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Announcement? Proceed. Mr. Speaker, uh, last Friday, January 15th, uh, one of the most hardworking constituents that uh, we have in District 58 turned 50 years old, so Patty St. Germain, congratulations. We are truly lucky to have you in, uh, in District 58, and we are always here. Thank you so much. Chairman Keeble. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Committee on Judiciary will meet at the rise in Room 101. Representative Hearn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to be recorded in the positive on one, two in the consent calendar, please. You may so ordered. Representative Diaz. Thank you, Speaker. Can you please call me back to new business? Representative Thank Diaz you. with new business. Any other new business? Representative Felipe with new business. Any further new business? Any other announcements, introductions? Lita D. Simone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Announcement, please. Proceed. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have Lexis training online, the electronic version of the Rhode Island uh, general laws. That'll be in the House chamber here tomorrow. Please remember to bring your password. And if you can't make it tomorrow, we could arrange to have you do the same thing in the Senate on Thursday. And for lawyers, it should, it's noteworthy that you get one continuing ed credit for it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Lita. No further announcements, introductions? Is there any objection to transmitting all matters on the clerk's desk to Her Excellency the Governor, the Honorable Senate, or the Secretary of State forthwith, hearing none so ordered? No further announcements or introductions. Lita D. Simone moves that the House adjourn. The motion is seconded by Deputy Minority Leader Costa. The House stands adjourned.